Hello everyone, in today's video we will show you how to create ripple effect using shader graph in Unity Engine. This is Ramaz al tabaf from Binary Lunar and let's get started. Okay, today's tutorial won't be a detailed one and I won't go step by step creating the shader graph. I already created it for you guys and I'll just explain what the nodes mean and how I created them. But before we start, uh, I want to mention that I've created high density uh, basic shapes, shapes like plane and the sphere. They have more polygons than the normal uh, or the default unity sphere and plane. So the more you have vertices, the more the smooth the wave animation will be. Maybe in the later lessons, I'll show you techniques how to create tessellations to make even low polygon shapes, high polygon ones to get smooth uh, waves on them. So let's open the shader file and I'll explain how I did it. For easy understanding, I divided the shader into, uh, you can say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight sections or groups we start by setting the ripple origin where we want the ripple or the wave starts the origin point on the shape on the surface of the shape then we can control the ripple density how many lines of waves we want within a certain amount of space then we can control the frequency how fast are the ripples generated then we can control the amplitude of the ripple which means we can control the length of the wave for example we can say if we are doing a ripple on a pool surface how much each vertice will jump up from the normal position then i added a fade out effect which means uh, the ripples will fade out as they are as they go far from the origin position and finally I just added an extra which do a gradient color spot to show the area effect of the ripple so let's start discussing group by group the origin point or the ripple origin simply we get the position of vertices in the object space then we subtract it from the point we want it to be the ripple origin the ripple origin of course is a vector 3 parameter we subtract it from the position of the vertice on the object space then we measure what is the length between the point of origin and any vertice on the surface after that we uh, create a parameter which is a float called ripple density to control uh, how many ripples within a certain amount of space we have how dense are the ripples and then we multiply that with 6.28 you might ask what is that value it's uh, the p value and we get a perfect waves when we multi we get the multiplies of the p so 1p 2p 2p is used to calculate uh, the circle so Based on uh, my researches, this value is the best to get perfect waves. So we multi multiply 6.28, which represents P, with the ripple density. Ripple density is a vector 1 or a float. And I set to have minimum and maximum values between 0 and 10, and the default value to 3.5. Then we multiply the length with the ripple density based on how far from the origin. Additionally, we can control the frequency of the ripple, how fast the ripples generated. So we create a float, another float, set the default to 3.5 and min 0 max 10. We multiply with an inverse p minus 6.28 and the frequency happening over time so we multiply time node with the frequency we want to control how fast the waves are generated then we add the density and the frequency together using an add node and we use the sign node to control the wave and to control how high is the wave or the ripple is we multi simply multiply with the amplitude value which is a float 
I set it to 0.1. Of course, all the values will be exposed in the editor, so you can adjust them real time. And finally, not finally, still some points, some more points. Uh, I created fade out effect to make the waves fade as they go far from the origin point. So we need two values, the edge blend. Do we want the edges of the shape to move or not? And the effect radius, how far from the origin points are the uh, ripples before they fade out? So we multiply the edge blend with the effect radius. Both of them are floats. The effect radius, I set the default value to one the minimum 0.1, the maximum 20. Edge blend is 0.5 and uh, we set the minimum to 0.01, which means the minimum value or the minimum vertice near the center of the game object and the max value 0.9, representing the max uh, vertice far from uh, the origin or at the edges of the game object. Then we use a smooth step node and set edge 1 to be the effect radius and edge 2 the edge blend which means the maximum value can be the max of the effect radius and the minimum one is the nearest to the center and we use as input the length how far is each point from the center because we will do the fade as the position gets further from the origin. Then simply we multiply the results of the fade out with the ripple amplitude. Then we need to get the normal vector to get the normal direction of the wave because if we didn't do that, the waves will be sharp without any normal bend of the shape. I can show you that now real time if you want. If I don't use the normal vector, by directly going here. Let's save. Check how harsh are the waves. They are sharp, not smooth waves. So to fix this, we just added the normal vector of the object and multiply it with the previous results. Then we add everything to the original position of the vertices that will create the wave. And we link the results finally to the position on the vertex of the shader. After that, I just added uh, an extra uh, step it's just a gradient color spot which will guide you where is uh, the origin point located so simply we, we get the lens from the ripple origin and we do a lerp from zero to the uh, current lens of the vertice so the gradient color will go uh, from zero representing the origin and give the highest value of the color at the center then it fades out as uh, we go further from the origin point so we can uh, determine where is the edge of the gradient by creating a new float and set its default value to one for now then we can clamp uh, the values between zero and one using clamp node and set the minimum to zero, maximum to one, or simply we can replace that by saturate, saturate node. So I can create here saturate node. Saturate node is the same as clamp node, and but, but it is automatically clamps the values between zero and one. So it's exactly the same. Then simply we multiply the results with the color with the gradient color that we want. It's just a simple color. Multiply it with the results. Then here uh, I added sample texture 2D. If you, you want to add a texture to your uh, shape or geometry or model and created main texture property, just add texture 2D so you can add texture to the object. And finally add the gradient color spot to the texture. Then link them to the base color on the fragment save and you will get this awesome results so as you can see here we can control everything from the inspector we can add a texture but i think i don't have one right now let's just use this one for example so we can have a texture if you want but let me remove it so we can see the color you can change the color to whatever you want here it's yellowish reddish also we can control where is the origin of the ripples on the surface of the game object? 
using the x, y, z values, which are vector three that we created during creation of the shader. So you can control the edge of the gradient, how far from the center this gradient will be shown. The amplitude controls the length of the wave, how far from the surface its vertice, each vertice can reach. The frequency, how fast the waves are. Let me click play so we can see this real time. Here's the amplitude on the plane. Here we can control the frequency. To increase the speed, we can make it very slow, like something, sorry, 0.5. It feels like slow motion of water drop. We can control also the ripple density, how dense or near each wave from the next one. The effect radius, how far each ripple can go from the center. So here we have a low value. They are only reaching here before reaching the end of the game object we can increase and you can as you can see all vertices getting the wave we can also do the edge blend which makes the wave blends nicely at the edges of the plane here so then i created uh, a second material to control everything on this uh, sphere and we can control the same parameters here nothing different i just made a different material so i can change the color if i want or add a, a texture. I think you can implement this nicely using code in your video games. Maybe uh, especially if you want to create a, when a bullet hits the surface of the water, that would be nice. Actually, it can have a lot of Im implementations and it's up to your creation. And that's it for today's video. If you found this video beneficial, don't forget to hit like, subscribe and the notification bell so you don't miss the next one. I'm deeply thankful for our supporters on Patreon for keeping supporting us despite the fact that I didn't post much content recently, but I'll promise I will do more regularly from now on. Thanks for watching and till next time, see you soon.